Okay. So yeah. So I don't know. I think we could probably safely commit to ten years, set aside ten years of wages. So yeah, support. under under the auspices of zone of truth, I mean the story does not change. It is not in the actual facts are not in dispute. Everybody right. saw him stab the guy. He still he believes very fervently that he had cause because otherwise he was going to be killed instead. And then the uh what are they? The Knights of the Silver Acorn? The Silver Tree. The Silver Tree. Silver Acorn sounds cooler though, a little more. We're not playing Mouse Guard. <laughs> I mean we could. No, we can't. It's not a not that good of a game. Okay. Knights of the Silver Tree. Uh one of the knights and a couple of the young men at arms just escort the man out to the boundaries of the mist, let him walk through. That's banishment. Yeah. And uh, I'll also cast a Gios on him that he can't return. Okay. Like, I think we should clarify that we're not just shoving him at any random point into the mist. We're shoving him. I think we would push him through like a point with a known egress from the area. Kind of like we know like oh, where the squ former Squelcher Lord's lands. There's you a know, road. Like, <laughs> you, you know, like that kind of thing. Because isn't just pushing him through the mist, isn't that killing somebody? Pretty much. Like, the, the, you die if that happens, right? I mean, That's... he'll be given provisions and maybe a means to defend himself, but he's on his own out there. You don't commit murder in my duchy. <laughs> so. I mean, at least two people do. Unless you're Victor. Aslan got away with it scot-free. Like, you didn't even yell at him. <laughs> well, he got so, away with it so far. I, you know what? I don't even consider that... That's not murder. Aslan is a natural disaster. <laughs> That's just natural <laughs> selection. God. Like, he walked into the virus cage. Don't cover it. Yeah, no, that's that is that's textbook to act of God right there. <laughs> okay. A lich murders someone in your village that is not covered by your insurance policy. <laughs> the actuaries have run the numbers. Econ. Yeah. So you guys are set to leave what the next day? Yeah, that would delay us by a day because I have to do the spells and whatnot. You are the trial. going through the motions to prepare to leave the next morning. Mm. Uh, Ekon, while you're out and about, probably too close to the church, uh, the another man from the village approaches you, hat in hand. The brother of the slain man from yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, that tells you, you know, before we understand that... Uh, the, the quality is heading out on a, a quest, but before he wants you to marry him to the widow so that her child will be cared for now that the father is dead. He thinks that it's partially his responsibility being the brother of the man who stands accused of having the affair in the first place. Uh, I feel that that's the child will be cared for because we as a as a village set aside provisions for that and if the widow would like to marry you uh, one of my acolytes can do that when she makes the decision so it's a no for today then yeah I mean unless like does does she want to marry you it's like she want to marry the person? Well, Genie's not there. He would. Oh, Genie's not there. Sorry, he, sorry, sorry. He would specifically. He approached Ekon while he was alone doing his like pre-dawn. Sorry, I thought we were all here. preparing to leave. Misread uh, that. My bad. A good question. He doesn't push the issue. He just kind of. Uh, he asks you, kind of half-heartedly, to pray with him for a moment, and then he sheepishly heads off on his way. And slightly after sunup, Lel has the oxen yoked up to the cart. Did Victor and Jeannie ever get a chance to get a song? Do you ask her for one? Yeah. Uh, Abela tells you that the Duchess has informed her there are to be no more songs in the town. When we're on the road, maybe, Victor.
Victor will assure her that he doesn't care what the Duchess has to say in regards to that. Vic, uh, say, Jeannie slaps Victor in the back of his head. That's she a... always. Yonoro laughs out loud at that. That's a luxury that you have, my friend. For us, life is not so simple. Perhaps on the road, then. <laughs> it's not a luxury he has. Evie's keeping a list. <laughs> it's a very long list at this point. Oh, yes. It's a... Like, she has to use the blockchain to keep it all... No. <laughs> Evie's... Like it's it's, it's literally a chain with a block on the end. And just, <laughs> like all of the like all of his transgressions are carved into it. It is one of those scrolls where it unfurls that it just goes rolling down the street. I kind of like the thought of like a literal block chain that Victor has to drag around like Marley. <laughs> all the stupid shit you've said. All a good time. <laughs> I figured it was gonna be a chain, and everything everything you gets added is just another link, and eventually just tied around the ankles and thrown off the bridge. <laughs> yeah. You guys have to rebuild the bridge first. But yeah, by sunup, everything's prepared and ready to leave. So Lel is going to be driving the ox cart. Uh, Abela uh, will be riding in the cart. Inoro could either ride or walk. She doesn't really have a preference. The cart does not travel particularly fast. This is not going to be a, 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 a speedy journey. Uh, the question is, are you traveling on foot or are you riding? Maybe can, um, maybe can ride. Maybe I think yeah, I, I'm going to be on a horse. Yeah, I'm not going to ride. Yeah, we'll... we'll... Yonoro spends the majority of the journey shamelessly flirting with Orson. You know what? I think Orson's going to be uh, into that. Orson uh, has never enjoyed conversation more in his life. <laughs> You hear Jeannie, like, Jeannie, like, looks over and sees this. She says, remember, remember what Evie said about protection. <laughs> Victor gives Orson tips on how to woo a Vistani woman. Oh, yeah, because I'm sure he knows. He does. Yanoro asks what Victor knows about wooing a Vistani woman. Oh, let me go find her name. I don't even know her name. Do you even know her name? Shameful. That's not uh, a good start. You're not making a good case, Victor. Her like, name is like Nigeria. <laughs> he literally doesn't know. No, her name was Nigeria. It's in my notes. He, yeah, he. It's in the notes. <laughs> I would like to point out, but Jeannie will say, "I'd like to point out to you, though, that we've never met this woman, so we can't verify she exists." Victor. Yeah. Make a opposed charisma persuasion check. my persuasion that's a 25 25 yonoro makes the case that perhaps victor believes he knows how to successfully woo a vistani woman more likely though is that the vistani women that he has crossed paths with know how to manipulate him out of his coin If that's true, it's going well spent. <laughs> wow. Victor, when she points that out, uh, Orson kind of stands up for you a little bit. Points out, well, you know, no. he's has his, He has a Vistani girlfriend. And uh, he's... In Canada. Made, in Canada, who none of us... She goes to another school. In Ravenloft, she's, 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 she's a supermodel. Uh, she's the reason we can travel a... But no, he points out that there's a reason that Silverbow is known to be such a friendly town to the Vistani, and it's due in no small part to Victor's efforts. To which Yonoro retreats from her position slightly. He says, well, then more fool us that we did not visit sooner. You're always welcome. As long as, as, long as the laws are obeyed, we, we turn no one away. The journey leaves well-trodden paths, just past about midday. Lel is very skillful at negotiating the ox cart along places where 
Uh, the roads are little more than craggy ruts in between the trees. Uh, there are places he has to climb down from his seat in the cart and lead the oxen by their yoke. And he's very deft at uh, making uh, repairs when need be. Several times over the course of the journey, you think, well, we're not going up that hill. Surely not. Or we're not going to be able to cross a creek of that depth. Uh, but Lel seems to have a way of calming and contorting his animals to his needs. So I'd like to, uh, along the journey, I'd like to get a little bit more information. Are we, how many times do we have to travel through the mists to reach the destination? Uh, four in total. And how long is the total trip? That depends on... Abela describes it as it depends on the moods of Aslan Rex. The mists are an extension of his, of his purview across Darkhan. If he is having a, uh, a quiet and lonely day, the mists will perhaps delay them not at all. But if he is in his anger, or if he is being pressed from one direction or another... The mists could deposit them in places that are less than helpful. To which Yunora replies, Well, then I guess we should hope that nobody has given Aslan cause for anger recently. Don't think any of us did. Yeah, let's hope ah! that's not ah! Oh. Uh, during the course of the trip, Genie actually would like press for a song okay that's up to evie abela will because, not do it without like, evie's Je go ahead genie will ask evie first she'll be like i, I want to hear this because you know I yeah think like, if we're out of the town then it's fine if the people like, aren't gonna overhear and overreact because like i've already died once um, I'm yeah, technically, i was there i'm technically dead so like i want to hear what they say how much coin do you offer her uh i don't know how much was she charging in the town? Offer, I'll give her... Whatever people I, thought it was worth. She would charge more. She would expect more from us. I know, but uh, I don't know how much gold I have on me. Let me see. Uh, I'll give her five gold. Does that seem fair? I don't know. I Listen, I'm part of the 1%. I don't have a good grasp on money. <laughs> so, from, from Victor's travels with Vistani, like, their average lifestyle typically is in, like, couple silver range i'll just give her five it can really time. depend uh it depends it varies from family to family vardo to vardo but it is not uncommon for vistani to require payments that is uh in line with the quality of person paying a nobleman would be expected to pay a gold where a commoner would be expected to pay a copper does, it, like, does, Vic, does victor think that five gold would be a fair price based on what he knows of vistani I mean, all Victor knows for sure is that yesterday morning this woman sang a song and then there was a murder ten minutes later. Well, that's because people can't handle the truth. Uh, I, feel, I feel... Didn't you, like, the last person to give you a reading, like, look at you and say, you know what, I'm not reading for you anymore because you're too awful. I think it was something like that, yeah. But whatever, you offer her five gold pieces? Yeah, like I said, I'll, I, uh, Jeannie doesn't actually carry money, so she has to get it from the group stash, but yeah, she'll give it to you. She brooks no argument. She gives no indication that it is an unfair price. Uh, she tells you that her nerves are still a little rattled after what happened last time she sang a song. Mm -hmm. As she clasps your hand in hers for a few moments and closes her eyes, she hums to herself tunelessly at first, and then after a few moments... Uh, a melody begins to form in her voice. And once she seems like she has a handle on it, she lets go of your hand, picks up her guitar, begins plucking at it. And she sings a song detailing how in a rage of jealousy and confusion and absolutely vile magic she describes the exact scene where Evie murdered Jeannie's original body. 
not all of the details are there. There's definitely a lot of poetry to the music here and there. There are, There's a vagueness in some places and details seem off in others. But the scene that she sings is this sorrowful ballad of a person who is already dead. He's legit. Genie. Mm. Yeah. Give me a horror check. Yep. I knew that was coming. Uh, that's a n- just straight number. Straight number. You got to do Nine. 11. Nine. Uh-oh. That is Genie's fourth fail. Yep. I think, is Genie number one for fails at this point? Yes. Yeah. You're ahead of Evie. Edmund has none. Edmund has never failed a horror check. My dude is a rock. Yeah. Uh, I think it's me, then Ekon. Yeah, and probably. And then Evie, maybe? That sounds right. I don't know which one is Evie's failed. Ekon and Victor have failed three. Evie has failed two. This is Genie's okay. fourth. All right. Just too hardcore, I guess. Genie. You're American Kirby. You couldn't speak for sure of the st- of Evie's state of mind when she did what she did. But the way that the song presented itself, because you've been keeping your lifeless corpse gentle reposed back in town uh, for some future date when you were going to something something underpants gnomes. This song kills any potential line of that happening. You become irrevocably convinced that that dead body cannot be brought back to life. Okay. Whatever hopes you were hanging on that are completely destroyed. And you have an incredibly difficult time even looking at Abela after that because she took that from you. Mm -hmm. Whatever hope that you had, she killed it. Uh, Jeannie, like, has tears in her eyes and she says, I'm just gonna go over here. (laughs) And she gets on her horse and she just pulls her cloak up and she just sits there quietly. Abela has no emotional reaction to the revelation at all. She simply puts, sets her guitar back in its place on the cart. Victor she compliments her her acumen and her talent and asks if she can do them later. Uh, she says she can sing the song right now. Uh, whenever she's ready. How much do you offer her? Uh, Victor doesn't want to make too bad of an impression, so I'll also offer five gold. Okay. She goes. Ask if there's anything he can do to help her help her nerves after the incident. She doesn't seem nervous at the moment. Uh, if anything, I'm, I'm she seems. In, if anything, she seems emotionally cold after what she just did to eat to Jeannie. But she goes through the same ritual where she clasps Victor hand, Victor's hand in hers, hums tunelessly for a moment till she finds her bearings. It's a different melody this time. Uh. It has more of the sense of a heroic ballad. And the song she sings you is about how in his glory and fervor the high priest of air calls forth bright, endless, cleansing flames to wash the grotesquerie that is Victor away from the earth. So basically she thinks that Ekon is going to kill him? Or does she just say high priest, not say who? Just says the high priest of air, the one living god. Air doesn't have priests. Well, there's not a Vistani word for Athar, so... Okay. <laughs> Victor, give me a horror check. Okay. Uh, 
Ah, uh, big money. <laughs> That's a one, my dude. Because <laughs> why would it be anything else? Victor, you know, in your heart of hearts, that there is only one high priest of air in Darkon. Kristen is not a high priest. He was never anointed. He was never ordained. At best, he's a cult leader. And his particular set of beliefs were already extremism and like not kosher, right? The song can only be about Ekon. At some point in the future, for some reason, Ekon is going to have to destroy you with fire. This is actually the same thing that Koyana told him when she read his cards. Yeah, I'm not sure Victor's too surprised by that, but it's nice to get certainty. Edmund's kind of going to politely decline having this fortune read because he doesn't want the uh, the knowledge that he is a werewolf to spread of its own volition. <laughs> well, she doesn't make an offer to anybody else. So yeah, Victor and Jeannie, you're both having really bad days now. Evie will go oh. sit with Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie thinking. will, like, just silently get up and walk away from you. Not this again. Yeah, this again, fool. Well, welcome to Depression Town. Population, Genie Veritas. <laughs> I actually have some things I would like to ask the Vistani. Okay. I will say, this is something that I've noticed traveled through this land, is the people of this realm tend to guard their true names very carefully. Can you tell me why that is? Who are you asking? Yonora or Abella? Uh, Yonora, I think. Abella seems busy. Yonora shrugs. Tells you that her name is Yonora Zale. There is no more to her than what you see. She cannot speak to the complexities of others. Yeah, that's something because... I don't say this out loud, but Aslan did ask for that, and that's the first time true names have come up in a while. Did anybody actually tell anybody else that Aslan asked for names? I haven't said anything. I don't think Victor told anybody that's what he asked. I don't for. think I know that, right? Like that was that. Akon was not involved when that happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any of us knew about that. Yeah. Okay. So like Victor certainly wouldn't have told you guys what he was doing. Okay. Then that's a, that's a little bit about a character then, so I won't pursue that. Is anybody else doing anything with these Vistani over the course of the journey? Victor will just thank, thank them for their songs and write a polite conversation. Okay. And Bob will share with them the drawing that he has taken of their of their Vardo in, in, in the uh, courtyard. Yonora points at the drawing and says, who is this? Actually, that might be something that I'm well, I understand that you only you only deal in in the the certainties of death, but not of uh, other things things that may not relate to uh, you don't you don't that may not relate to that directly. I don't think this is a a portent of death, but. Yonoro says that she certainly hopes not. It's it's something that's appeared in my artwork ever since I came to these lands. I draw it unconsciously. I put I put paint to canvas and he's there. Yonoro compliments the drawing, but you get the sense that she's not much of a a a uh, Enjoyer of the arts. Abela gives only very uh, polite but curt noises in that same direction. You see that she almost... Actually, give me an insight check, Edmont.
In Sigit. In Sigit. Ten. Okay. Yeah, Abela also has no real interest in the artwork, and she barely even looks at it. Edmond looks somewhat disappointed, but pushes no further on the matter. Okay. Arriving at the first part of the mists that you're supposed to pass through, Lel brings the cart up to a stop. Uh, from here, he and Yunoro are going to step into the mists. They'll probably be gone for a couple of hours. They'll be back by the time the sun goes down. The purpose of which is to ascertain the best way to cross the mists with the cart. They're very good at this. They insist this is their job. They do it a thousand, thousand times. Uh, and if they're not obstructed from doing so, they disappear on foot into the mists and very quickly vanish from view. Well, they're the ones that know how to do this stuff, so... Uh, let's keep an eye on that while they're gone. Keep an eye on who? Just the surroundings, make sure... Yeah, obviously. With what you're staying behind? It's quiet, drizzling. Yes, Abela is staying behind in the cart. And true to their word, just before sundown, they arrive back. They seem to be in fairly good spirits. They tell you that the journey uh, from here will be traveling alongside a uh, fairly well-known stream, far, far away from any currently occupied villages. But they caution you not to drink from it. Fill your skins as elsewhere. This particular stream uh, has evil flowing in it that is best not trifled with. Where does it flow from? They don't know. It flows from some headwaters beyond the mists to places that they have no business traveling to. Probably sound philosophy. Don't go looking for trouble. Yeah. You know what I was able to describe exactly what you're going to find on the other side of the mist before she takes you through. So the second leg of your journey is across a much uh, rockier uh, terrain. So it's slower going, but you are in fact traveling alongside, uh, you're traveling upstream. And even though it is summer, the stream itself is extremely cold, just this side of freezing. It looks unbelievably clear and crisp looks like one of those Zephyr Hills commercials. That looks enticing. That depends on how thirsty you are. You guys brought your own provisions, and there are other yeah. uh, springs and ponds and lakes and things along the way to fill your glass yeah. when you need to. I mean, I can, I can also create water, and Victor has an endless decanter. Victor, are you drinking the water? You can tell he's I thinking don't about drink it. Vine. <laughs> <laughs> My God. The second leg of the journey comes to an end much in the same way the first one does, except this time, uh, Yonoro makes a request that instead of going beyond and scouting into the mists with Lel, she asks Orson to come with her, and Lel would stay behind with the cart. Orson defers to you guys on this point. Victor nudges him and says, go for it. And Ekon's like tacking up his horse. He's like, yeah, no, or Orson is an excellent woodsman. Uh, good at finding tracks. Keeps his careful eye to the weather. He seems like a great choice. Okay. Maybe points at her eyes, then points at Orson. Is there something wrong with your eyes? She's watching him. How? He's saying the don't get her pregnant. There's mists in between here. So again, Orson, you just, I ask Orson, does he feel confident that he can handle this? Orson always feels confident. This man has been like reduced to a brain in a river and bounced back from it. This man sleeps with a brothel. He's confident. Like, <laughs> Orson's not worried about a little bit of wilderness at this point. He's sure not worried about one single Vistani woman. So yeah, unless obstructed, the two of them disappeared into the mists. Come back. How long were they gone the last time? 
not more than a couple hours. They would have left after midday, and they said they would be back by sundown, and same thing today. Uh, uh, I can... And I'll just lean over to Evie and whisper, I can bring them up in the mirror in an hour if you want. I don't think I want to see what they're going to be doing. <laughs> Evie does not want to uh, subscribe to her brother's OnlyFans. Yeah. They return just before sundown. Again, in good spirits. You know, it's, uh, she says that the mist's coming out exactly where they intended, this time along uh, an ancient road. A road so ancient that it barely registers as more than just stones in the bedrock from here and there. Although, if you know what to look for, you can see the ancient remnants of old posts or walls along the edges of it. Nobody knows who built it, or for what purpose, or why, or how long ago. Uh, but it does mean that the next, the third leg of the journey is going to be much smoother than the first two. Is it safer to make camp on this side of the mist or the next? Uh, safer to make camp on this side and then travel across tomorrow morning. Okay. They're very adamant about traveling through the mists, against traveling through the mists at nighttime. That is not something that is ever safe. That is wise and prudent. Good to just not gainsay that. There are places here that are scary enough in the daytime. The rain thickens the next day as you're traveling along just the vestiges of this ancient, ancient road. Until by midday, it's storming. Very unpleasant. Thunder rumbling all around you. Yonoro never seems to be in bad spirits. And Abela never comes out of the back of the cart. This leg of the journey takes a couple of days. And once again, as you come across the Wall of Mists, once again, Yonoro and Orson uh, prepare to take their leave on the other side to make sure that the road goes where they're expecting it to go. And if they're not obstructed, they leave again. This time, they don't come back before sundown uh once the sun yeah well i think once the sun is uh once the sun is below the horizon background's gonna have genie pull out the mirror and scry orson okay all right make your check to see if you can do it yeah you have what, to, is that a 25 percent chance it's the wisdom saving throw it's a wisdom save okay as long as you pass a wisdom if you don't pass the wisdom save you cast the scrying spell and look at the skin stealer instead That's a 10? Or an 11? Uh, what is the DC? Because uh, I can give him a plus 5. That's in my other note here. I set the DC at 15. Okay, so, yeah, a plus okay, 5. Okay, so I can't enough. fail that as long as you're, you're keeping an eye on me. Yeah. Okay. So Ekon seems to, like, just sort of twitch for a moment and not really be there, and then Genie does whatever she does to inspire people, and he fo refocuses his mind. Uh, Orson technically gets a chance to save against this unless he chooses not to. Uh, would he know you're the one casting it? I think he would. I would have told. Uh, I mean. He uses okay. scrying spell a lot. And Orson. I use scrying a lot. Plus I've got a minus five because I know him well. And if we have a, one of his possessions, I can knock that down to a minus ten to his to a minus fifteen to his save. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Morrison would not try to save against okay. this. In fact, that might be a weakness I can exploit, because if somebody else tries to scry Orson, he'll just assume that it's you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like it's like it would be just a straight. And shit. Uh, brother, if you want to maybe let us see through the night. While we're doing this. Yeah, I'll I don't, cast I, a dark vision on my brother. I think that Orson would have to roll a straight up twenty to pass yeah. that saving throw <laughs> from <laughs> from uh, Ekon. And the scrying sensor is like an object that you call into being that has to move along with them. Is that correct? Yeah, it moves. It uh, it fo if I target a creature, it follows them. It's invisible, but if you can see invisibility, you have a chance to see it. Okay, uh, Orson cannot see invisibility as far as I know. The terrain on the other side, where Orson and Yonora are, is 
predominantly made up of uh, swampland. They're moving through what looks like maybe a mangrove swamp. And they're moving with some purpose very quickly. Orson keeps glancing back over his shoulder. And for the first time, you see Yunoro look upset, look angry about something. And after watching them for a few moments, you see that they're tracking something or someone through the swamp. Through the marshland. Uh, yeah, I can be in here through this for ten minutes. Okay. Can you can you cast sending while you're doing that? Is, is uh, I don't there... think it con requires concentration, right? Yeah, yeah. So I can, and I have sending prepped. Yeah. Ask him what they're doing. Yeah. I'll uh, fire off sending to Orson. Orson's reply is that the Vistani family that murdered Abela's baby son is nearby. And Yanora wants to come up on them and plan an ambush. He's tried to talk her out of this. He's tried to get her to come back to the Vardo, but she was immovable. So he's decided it's better to help her track and see where this goes than leave her to her. He couldn't get back on his own anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I can weigh all of that. In this. Do we want to go through or wait for come back? I think I we hate... need to ask Abela and the brother what their take on this. Like, Yeah. If they wanted revenge on this family, we don't know enough what's, about what's going on. So you tell Abela and Lel just what? Yeah. The sending? Okay. Yeah. Abela uh, snaps open a fan and begins fanning her face. And you see that she has difficulty making eye contact for a few moments. Lel screws his face up into a grimace. And begins just, uh, he's sitting at the opposite side of the cart from Abela. And you see that he's rocking back and forth with some purpose, clenching his fists together. Abela tells you that uh, one of the other families who had come to the Empateria de Yarna, which is a meeting of many Vistani families, many clans, in the middle of winter, come together to share warmth, to share tales. One of them were the Okeris, and she tells you that one of the Okeri clan, a woman, practices blood ministrations, and that she requires youthful innocent blood to weave her magics can you get us through the mist and abela tells you that she had stolen her infant son for her own purposes and then left the yarna in the dead of night is do they okay. take do they take enough blood that the child is dead the child is very dead abela can you and will get us through the mist right now at, when you mention that, Lel doesn't respond. He stands up, and the man, close to eight feet tall, he stands up, the whole cart tips under his weight. Uh, yeah, he seems down to clown, to take you through the mists here in the dead of night, which you were told to never do. Would is, there it anything help? We could, is there anything we can say to her that would make her stop? To Abela? You, no, to the other sister. Is there anything we could... Do they know anything we could tell her... That would make her abandon this course of action. Because we could send her a message. Abela tells you that her sister is not an imbecile. If things looked looked too dangerous, she would not waste her life on recklessness. Will seeing something on the other side of the mist help you navigate through it? Oh, Abela doesn't do any of the navigation anyway. That's Yonoro's no, problem. Yeah, I'm asking him. Oh, you're asking Lel? Yeah. Lel looks you up and down. And then he moves his head in a way that is neither a nod nor a shake. But he's looking at you expectantly. Uh, brother, put dark vision on him. But look through this mirror for the next five minutes. You'll be able to see the other side. Genie, get ready to drop it in the bag and move. So you guys are heading yeah, through the mists um, in the dead of night. Look at this go wrong. Icon loses darkness to dark vision. Well, gets dark vision. Okay. Four key points I've spent. Evie will cast dark vision on herself. I mean, 
are we going are we going dark are we going dark or are we are we going to be how visible are we going to be how many dark visions do we have i can give out one more it's a fairly dark night because you've got it's raining fairly steadily so you don't have a lot of moonlight to work with well i mean i have the light cantrip that's what i'm asking yeah you can go as bright as you want yeah, I'm asking everybody else, like, how bright are we going here? Is like, do uh, are Ekin and I are going in Beacon or? Victor, I mean, uh, Victor, can you see in the dark? No. Okay, that's one more person that we can easily do dark vision. So I say we go with light. Okay, I can give dark vision to Victor. Well, then Genie won't have it. Okay, uh, that's that's fine. I don't need it. Okay. So Lel and Victor have dark vision, and then Genie's using a light cantrip. Is that what I heard? And Evie's casting in her dark vision on herself. And Ekon okay. already has the dark vision from... I think I'm not going to be lighting up the cantrip. I think I'm just going to be essentially just holding on to Evie's hand and let her guide me until stuff hits the fan. Okay. Yeah, I'll, so I'll, after I let, give him five minutes to study the other side where those two are, if he wants to, we'll drop the mirror back into the bag of holding and get ready to go. Once again... Trust and Evie's never backfired for Genie. Very skillfully. It's actually very jarring because you enter the mists just off the side of what is essentially a stone road. And immediately you're sloshing through uh, inch thick muck. Uh, Lel has to work very, very hard to keep the cart from bogging down. But he's a very skillful driver. And eventually he gets uh, the wheels of the cart and the, the hooves of his oxen up onto... A tiny dry patch that none of you even saw there. And he begins to pick up speed a little bit. Lots of turning and jackknifing this way and that through invisible paths that Lel must have traveled uh, a thousand times before. Eventually he gains an elevation a little bit, coming up out of the muck and into the tree line. And at that point, Yonoro and Orson find you there. Uh, they about just run into you because neither of them have dark vision. <laughs> but they're very, very surprised. Yonoro admonishes her siblings for traveling the cart through the mists. Uh, one or two of you guys catch some flack for having pressured them into it, clearly. But she's very agitated. She's lashing out. Victor responds that he's come to help her. There a place we can hunker down the cart for the night. Is the storm getting worse, Orson? Uh, it's not raining on this side of the mists. Oh, okay. The rain uh, ended as you came swamp? through. Yeah, it's just moisture from the swamp. You guys came out of the mists into a pretty thick patch of muck. But yeah, there are dry spots where you could hold the cart up for the night. I have no... I have no qualms with assisting you with your with this this feud that you have. I'm not sure that's something we want to get involved with. But I don't like blood drinking baby killers, Evie. Well, yeah, that. Well, yeah, that's definitely bad. But and there's there a reason the Vistani as a whole have not banished or otherwise adonished them for these? Is this a pattern? Was this the first time it happened? Uh, to hear Yonoro tell it, uh, this woman, Florica, is a distant cousin of hers. Okay. And this is just a practice of hers that she's been doing for years. To hear Yonoro tell it, uh, who could say how many children she might have killed over the years? What is Victor? She's help? still welcome at your meetings? With the Vistani, it takes all kinds. Okay. How would the Vistani normally treat somebody who did this? There's any number of ways. It depends on a lot of factors. Uh, Victor, give me a history check. Uh, history, that'd be 25. 25. In general, the Vistani 
Vistani who commit crimes against each other are ostracized from the group. Although, Vistani's sense of morality is very malleable. What this suggests to you, uh, whether you want to voice this out loud or not, is up to you. Probably would be a bad idea. But the most likely reason other clans amongst the Vistani would turn a blind eye to Florica's crimes, assuming that she's guilty of them, is that she's performing some useful service. <coughs> if the blood ministrations that she's performing actually work, if they actually do something, in the mind of a lot of people, that would outweigh the evil that must be committed in order to make them happen in the first place. In other words, if she's guilty of these crimes, there's a good chance that Florica is a an actual blood magus. Victor will not vouch that out loud. So here's the thing. There are five amongst their groups, and they're up at the red clay pools. Yonoro is... Uh... Victor, do you speak the Vistani tongue? How long was Victor spent doing that? Well, I don't know if you've ever learned it. I mean, he would have learned it while he was out learning with them. But did you? <laughs> this would have been a downtime action thing. Would they have taught it to him? Yeah, this this is not something that ever came up. Okay. Uh, like, our previous... The previously, uh, when we asked if we could learn the Vistani, we were told no. They said they would not teach us. So. That's also very likely. Uh, because Victor would be seen as an outsider. Although, if he's fathered a couple of Vistani bastards at this point, maybe... Uh, Whoa. I'm just assuming Victor has. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, we were told Victor was using protection. Okay, Victor, <laughs> I gotta, here, here's my warning to you. You have been trying to cultivate a relationship with Astani. If it's her that you helped murder this person, that's going to put a huge damper in your relationship. So you know what gives the long explanation uh, about what she and Orson saw to her siblings. And she's speaking in, their, in the Vistani tongue. Victor, you don't understand what they're saying, but you've been around them long enough that you can kind of get the gist of some things. So Victor, give me an intelligence check at disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's, Calm it's down. Bad, Victor That's can bad. also cast Comprehend Language basically at will. That's pretty good. Yeah, Comprehend Language would avail you here. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. So, Victor, you're casting Comprehend Languages. Yeah. Uh, and Orson confirms some of this information, too, although he's uh, he saw a lot less than Yanoro did. We'll start with what Orson knows. Approaching, like, leave, leaving the swamp, at the edge of the swamp, uh, borders along this strange, craggy formation uh, that dries out very quickly and is very devoid of vegetation to the point where in the sunlight he would assume it would look very alarming that these two, like, biomes would even be next to each other. Only in a place like Darkon could this be possible. At the top of this crag, which Yonoro had called the Red Clay Pools, uh, there was a large campfire and a plume of smoke that he saw rising up uh, into the moonlight. The perimeter of the area was guarded by a wall of lashed bone. They moved along this perimeter for a little while. Uh, here and there, Yonoro peeked in through the bones uh, to get a good look inside. He doesn't think that she could have seen anything. There was no way. They didn't have dark vision. There was no light. Uh, but she insisted that they continue to look. Eventually, she had seen enough and turned back. That's what Orson knows. Victor, here's what Yonoro knows, or what she claims to know. The Okaris were camped on the other side of their bone wall at the pools. There are five of them. Uh, one is Brisha, the matriarch. 
uh, her son, Boba. Uh, Boba is known, she thinks Boba is a murderer and an assassin. He's an expert with blades. Boba is married to Florica, who is Yonoro's, uh, the, the triplet's distant cousin. Florica is the one that she's accused of killing her sister's baby. In addition, they have two other people traveling with them that are not members of the family. She mentions a few names of family members that are missing from this particular group. Uh, some kind of hired hand who speaks a bizarre foreign language. She thinks he's from beyond the mists. Uh, someone she refers to as a fop and a dandy. Orson has not seen this person and can't confirm that he's there. The last is a Vistana woman that Yonoro says she does not recognize, but she gives a brief description. Victor, she's describing your old friend, Koyana. Oh, God. They okay, know. So we can't rush in there and kill them all. So Yonoro knows so where they are, saying. how many there are, and she believes they have every cause in the world to ambush them and bring them to justice. And that's exactly what she thinks she's intent on doing. Yeah, now Victor's going to try and talk her out of this. <laughs> in fact... Oh, I don't have... Aha, I did miss out on some of my prep work before the session. I forgot to open Imager.com. <laughs> Are we going to see the return of the perfectly uh, round clearing? I haven't used that in years. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said we're going to see the return of it. I legitimately think I don't have that asset anymore. I don't know. Yeah, I think the last time this came up, that's actually what we were talking about. Yeah, I have no idea where it is. I'm sure I could find it again. Yeah, no. Victor's, going to, Victor's going to have to tell um, her that he can't support ambushing them while they're there with two people who weren't involved and another Vistana, Vistana that they know well. Oh, hold on to your butts because I'm going to reload a table here. There we go. Let's get rid of all those extraneous dice. Check out our awesome Flump mascot. He's the best. Hi, Raven Flump. <laughs> Hi, Raven Flump. <laughs> we saved him in a cave, didn't we? So here is a map from Afternoon Maps of the red clay pools. These are sulfurous hot springs just on the edge of the marshland. This is where their camp is and the perimeter of it is surrounded by a wall lashed together of bone. So Victor, you tell uh, you tell Yonora that you can't support this endeavor? Well, no, what, what he says is that he supports her getting revenge, but not when there's two innocents and one of our friends. Her she, Vistana that we have, has lived with us for a long time, that will she, certainly know us. And she spits on the ground and tells you that nobody who associates with the O'Carries are innocent. As that may be, perhaps it's best if we have conversation first and we hold the revenge for the moment. Yeah, you know, it doesn't understand why we would do that when we have the drop on them, when we can just ambush them, go in there, raid the camp, bleed them all, get justice for her sister's baby. Le everything about Lel's body language supports what his sister is saying. This is what happens when we get involved in Vistani politics. Victor attempts to explain that the best way to get revenge is patiently you know or disagrees she says the best way to get revenge is with a blade that your target doesn't see until it's too late exactly you have to choose your time and your place well she knows the place and the time very very well she and orson were just there in fact they, she thinks if you they, uh if they strike before dawn they won't even have time to wake up and see what has come you're talking about descending on a camp of people and murdering them. How certain are you that that's all that's in the camp? You mentioned there were others unaccounted for. They could be there. We so, don't know what we're walking into. It's a bad idea. Yonoro insists that she's completely certain. 
Orson is a little too timid to gainsay her, but you can tell he's very uncomfortable at her certainty. I could do a divination. Why don't, why don't you let us go to the camp and take a look? Edmont would be very good at that. Indeed. There's no way they'd see him. Yeah, actually, that's probably a good idea. Why don't we go, and then that way, if you're not exposed, you know, they don't know you're there. You know, her open her mouth opens her mouth to object. You can see her her blood is still is still very hot, but after a moment, you can see the dawning on her. See, yes, they wouldn't know that you're traveling with us. No, and we know one of the Steinitz there. And you couldn't betray us to them because they don't know the way to Heidenglost. Also, I like you. Why would I do that? Well, from what she's heard, you liked a lot of Vistani. Please stop flirting with the Vistani women. Please. <laughs> Victor. What is it now it's not time. flirting. Victor respects Avela's talents. I would much rather we go talk to them than we just go in and kill them sight unseen. All right, ground rules. One, Victor, you don't get to speak. Two, we don't tell them that... I say this knowing full well Victor's still going to speak, so don't don't take that. Okay. How, how <laughs> do we explain them how we got here? Who, who took us? I don't know. We just tell them we... We were uh, going through, and then why don't we tell them? And we got separated from our guides. We got lost in the mist. But who's yeah. our guide? Yonora would counsel against that because if so, if you went up to a group of Vistani during the middle of a journey through the mist and told them we lost track of our guides, what they're going to hear is whatever Vistani they hired as guides abandoned them, and probably for good reason. Oh, okay. You don't just lose your Vistani guide unless they want it's, to be lost. Well, is it possible we just, for us to be lost in the mist? No, why don't we just tell them we're in the area investigating cultist activity? That's true. Like, why don't we just tell them that we're here on business and we've been here for a while, so we're not, you know, with our guides anymore? Be, because the question is, who is your guide? The question, the answer to that is none of your business. <laughs> so here's like, Yonoro. She tells you that she accepts your offer to go up and get a confirmation of their number and their strength. Her expectation is that you're going to come back and deliver that information and then help her formulate a plan to ambush the camp. If you do not agree to do this, or for any reason she thinks that you're, you've, you've lied to her about this, and you don't otherwise persuade her from this course of action, she can abandon you here, and you have no way of getting back home, nor do you have any way of getting to Heidengloss. You don't know where you are. Now we're seeing why everyone hates the Vistani. It took, what, 40 sessions? Yeah. <laughs> I finally got you there. They've been pretty cool so far. This is this is less cool. I mean, I appreciate the situation that they're in, but they're putting us in a really awkward situation. Yeah, like, they, right. they've essentially just stopped fulfilling their, bar their part of the bargain to go off and do their own separate thing. Yep. Uh, uh, like, like, so, Orson, you should stay here. I would agree with that. Everyone else, uh, Akon is going to go ahead and invoke a sixth level enhance ability to give everyone advantage on charisma. <laughs> and then he will cast borrowed knowledge on himself to give himself uh, proficiency in deception. Okay. So those both last for an hour or so. You might want to wait until you get up to, the, up to the bone wall, then. I have the option of Pass Without Trace as well for the five of us. All right. Well, now that you guys are mired in this Vistani nonsense, why don't we take a 15-minute break? Go ahead and get your coffee, get your bagel. And when we come back, we'll see if you can negotiate your way out of this.